All right, there we go. There we go. No, so we're gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna give you guys a little insight into the expert team, right? As we talk about these patch notes. So since I brought up OGD, let's just start with OGD, even though that's not how uh, the patch notes themselves start. And actually just so people know what's up and what to expect when they come into the stream, let me update my, my uh, message here. Oh, wait, I bet you I'm sharing this and you guys are seeing my dashboard, aren't you? Who cares? My dashboard isn't G14 classified. I do not hide anything from you guys. So there you go. All right. So that's updated. You guys saw my dashboard. Try not to be too impressed by anything you saw there. Because there's not much to be impressed by. So anyway, anyway, anyway. So let's talk about the OGD. So I'm going to give you a look into experts. So when that first announced, right, I was, and a lot of other experts, but I don't want to speak for them, were 100% against it, okay? We were 100% against it. Now, this isn't me saying, oh, everyone's going to hate it, so let's all beat up on Gameloft. No, I did not agree with it at all. Before anything questioned, I just got the green pirate. Is he any good? Yes. Kendrick is amazeballs, and in my opinion, he is one of the best pirates. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think he is the best pirate. But anyway, so um, we were against it, and here is why it was changed. OGD, basically, in its old form, was just too powerful. Basically, all content um, Game Law felt resulted into kind of a protect the president kind of thing, where... You brought one OGD unit and a bunch of supports to make sure the OGD unit live. That's not really how they wanted the game to be played. So there's going to be a fundamental shift from OGD being the kind of destroy all to direct damage being really the end game. Uh, so how it looks, just to give you an idea of the progression path, right? It's going to be OGD is what noobs use in the beginning. As your account grows and you get stronger, say, you know, you make that mid-game to end-game shift, they want attack-based units like Blade Masters, like Ink Ninjas, and things like that. They want that to be your main source of damage. Now, in order to combat how the current game works with OGD being, you know, top-end, they are going to be, they adjusted difficulty on a bunch of bosses, just like the patch notes say, and they made it smoother now. So as you start to wean off of OGD and go more to direct damage units like BMs and what have you, you get a smoother progression path. Now, as I said, several of us said, hey, you know, we don't know how this is going to be to noobs, how current farm teams like people like Wrath are going to be affected. But this is their vision that OGD really should never have been as strong as it is. And because a lot of the meta for bosses kind of revolves around that, they wanted to come up with a way to change it. So you can still build your Snake Ladies. You can still build Congo. But the problem is, since they have low base attack, right? That they're not going to get big OGD numbers like they used to. Um, even if you build them attack. It's just, unfortunately, it's just not going to... It's not going to be as strong as it was. So you are going to need direct damage. There, there definitely is a shift to direct damage, like, again, Blade Masters, Ink Ninjas, etc., for your clearing power, right? So that's what's going to happen. Just a heads up, because I have a lot of videos on Snake Ladies, well, like, and I have the new video I just made on Congo, right? So the reason why I didn't mention that in the Congo video, I was hoping that they wouldn't push it live, but they are. They are going to push that change live. So, you guys have seen the outer boss. You know what he's all about. We'll quickly go over the patch notes for him. After a long struggle... Okay, so they want us to get more five-star creatures, figures. No, okay. So, Wrath, that that misspoke could be on me, right? It's not that they want us to pull more five-star creatures. It's that they want us to have more direct damage creatures. And I know I said BMs and Ink Ninjas, but BMs and Ink Ninjas are the first two that just came to mind. But there's like Sid Run... That she's direct damage. She's not about OGD. Uh, there's bombers. There's um, 
Who else is direct damage that's four and three star? I'm trying to think. Like, uh, big hitters. Those are the only ones that come to mind. I hate when I'm put on the spot and I can't think of it. But there are a lot of direct damage units that are not five star. I just named the big ones again because they were the first thing that actually popped into my head. Dino Kids. There you go. Dino Kids is another one. That's why they got buffed. Derbies, exactly. Okay, thank you. Dino Kids is a really great example because Dino Kids are actually helpful in Harbinger. As you saw, I have a five star one that I'm currently building, and I'm going to be building the water one as well because direct damage, again, just so you guys have a heads up. I mean, you've seen the patch notes, but direct damage is going to be the wave of the future. So if you're heavily dependent on OGD, it's going to be different for you. Fairies, there you go. Dude, look at my, my chat. Helping helping a brother out. Helping a brother out. So fairies is definitely another great example. Yes. Thank you, guys. So, uh, after the long struggle against the corruption spread by the mysterious outer players, we'll not have a chance to confront the outer harbinger, a malignant entity from beyond the edges of the multiverse. The outer har harbinger boss raid is unlocked by defeating stage 5 of the Steel Widow. Here's the boss mechanics. No, don't feed your snake ladies wrath. Don't feed your snake ladies. I'll tell you what. Um, oh, wow. Welcome to the three Alia Club mullet. Uh, I'm a, unfortunately a proud member of that club. But I, I feel your pain. I'll tell you what. Um, give me a little bit wrath. What I'll do is let me farm, because now there's actually a reason also to six star your snake ladies. Let me six star my water snake lady once this patch goes live, and then I'll put some brutal gear on her, and we'll see how she does, okay? We'll, we'll see how she does under the new one. Um, or actually, I could probably do it on beta as well. Uh, but here's the boss mechanic, shield. Every... 50 times Outer Harbinger takes damage, it generates a shield based on its max HP. If the previous shield is still active when this happens, it detonates dealing massive damage. So right there, you want to burst through the shield. Uh, Blade Bane. Whenever a champion damages the Outer Harbinger, uh, Outer Harbinger, it gains a stack of the Blade Bane buff, which cannot be removed, but will expire after 1.5 seconds. If a champion has more than 10 stacks, this debuff detonates inflicting damage, legendary lowered attack, and legendary disorient. Now, what this one right here is doing, it's telling you, this is why people say slow hitting, uh, slow hitting mobs or champions are the best. Because you don't want to uh, stack this blade bane buff, right? It hurts, it makes that unit crappy, so that's why you want slower hard hitting units. Regeneration passively gains the regeneration buff. If this buff is removed, the outer harbinger will reapply it in five seconds. So mortal. I believe the boss is affected by mortal. He's not immune to it. Time twisting. Whenever a champion uses a skill to lower the skill cooldowns of another champion, the effect is nullified and instead the target is stunned. Cool round reduction from synergy traits and the adept gear sit do not trigger this effect. So what this means is you throw Monus out, you throw uh, Rhoda out, you throw um, uh, uh, Nagas out because they're just going to get uh, the target stunned and it's not going to do anything to help you out. But you will get your synergy trait and you will get your adept gear cooldown. Uh, the Withering Gear set no longer drops on Steel Widow 11 and 15. Instead, it now drops on all stages of the Outer Harbinger. Yes. Yes. That is correct. Zinnia is out. Because she does have cooldown reduction. So, yes. Zinnia is definitely out, my friend. Uh, but the good news is Diva is a fusible unit that you can get so diva can definitely replace her in there because she doesn't do cooldown reduction and she's a pretty freaking good healer so it's win-win win-win in that situation wait why are we throwing out rhoda because rhoda has cooldown reduction on skill what's two I think Rhoda's cooldown, or is it on skill three? Well, one of the two, so she's just going to stun herself. Plus, she has haste, which is going to make your units attack faster. 
which means that they're going to stack the Blade Bane buff, which is going to blow up on them, lower their attack, and disorient them. So you don't want... Uh... Oh, it's on ult? Thanks, Smitty. So it is on the ult. So you don't want to bring her. That's why you're throwing Rhoda out. Anyone that has cooldown reduction. So Nagas, Rhoda, Zinnia, uh, all of those. They, they're, they're not good to bring. You want slow, hard-hitting units. So you want to run like, you know, Dino Kids with Wonga and, because uh, that's attack up buff, which is going to make your, and a shield buff. So Wonga and Mojo are going to be even bigger in the outer uh, boss because they're going to make your hard hitters hit harder and they're going to protect them. Alright, so the Withering Gear set no longer drops and still with 11 and 15. Instead, it now drops on all stages of the Outer Harbinger. Loot Gear sets for the Outer Harbinger boss raid. So this is the fat loots and while you're going through this headache. Withering, we know about Stalwart, periodically shields nearby allies. Shield HP is 300% of caster's defense. Now you look at this, Who you, you know who stands out immediately to me for this is Camille. Imagine my Camille right now has 2,600 defense. Imagine Stalwart on, on that. Obviously, I would have to give up two of my uh, my uh, my uh, sturdy slots to equip this, but it would be worth it for the shield. I'm too behind on everything to care at this point. Oh, come on, Wrath. Don't, don't you get grumpy on me, Wrath. Don't you dare get grumpy on me. So, must be nice to have a Camille. Yeah, when we were looking at this and, and uh, when it was just talk before they pushed it to beta, I was like, oh yeah, my Camille is going to be super happy. Alright, so next one. Potent. Plus 10% damage dealt, excluding ongoing damage. So here you see the shift towards, um, towards direct damage versus OGD, right? Because Potent, we're getting 10% damage. Now imagine this on like a Bomber or on Dino Kid. Smitty, come on, Brotato, come on. Enduring, 50% of damage taken is converted into damage over time. This damage is not a debuff and cannot be removed. So basically, I don't know if you guys have played World of Warcraft, but the uh, Panda Tanks have an ability called Stagger, which does the same thing. It takes a massive amount of damage and distributes it evenly over time. They're not get. I wouldn't say they're getting nerfed into the ground. It's. I haven't played with them, and I apologize, Wrath. I'm letting you down here as a member of the expert team. But I haven't played them on attack to be able to tell you how bad the nerf is. I think Nature MK will is a sleeper pick for this fight. You think so, Sub? Could be. Could be. I haven't. I don't have them to test it. So I kind of remember Nature MK's kit. Uh, Marshall, every two seconds, next basic attack deals 200% damage to the primary target. I don't think it's that big a nerf, just gear them differently. Yes, the, well, the cap, the mullet, though, the cap that it is, it can, their OGD damage can't exceed 200% of their attack. Yeah, see, that's the thing, you never had to skill up snake ladies. Well, look at what they get when they skill up, because I don't remember. But that might help them be better in this. And also, you're going to have to six-star them. Because remember, it's based off your attack. And when you when you um, plus star something, they get more stats. So again, you're going to looking at taking them from the five-star they're at now into six-star. He's got a low CD strip for the Regan and an attack up buff. An ult that ignores shields and some defense. And low hits per attack. Dude, sub everything you just said says nature is going to be perfect for this fight everything you just said sounds so good yeah but now she gets squashed and there's a cap to the ogd scaling too that's very true that's very true because now you're going to have to figure out how to still build her here here here's a crazy build wrath because we're talking about it right what do you think of this build so we want to give her attack right but we still want her to be tanky and be able to live we don't want her to be glass right how about this build Two times vital, one times sturdy, attack, attack, accuracy. What do you think? 
And the gold star build, that's the easy build. But the gold star build, attack, attack, attack. And you get all your accuracy. You go for accuracy, attack, HP, and defense subs in that order. Because if you can get all your accuracy and subs, then you can swap out your accuracy bracer to an attack bracer, thus giving you more damage. But I don't know if that puts her over the cap, though. I'd ha We'd have to do the math to see if that would. Because if it... if going that third attack bracer puts her over the cap then it would be better to go for accuracy so you're not stuck trying to get accuracy subs for the rest of your gear you think precision would be better than sturdy yeah but the the thought process mullet behind uh sturdy is that you want to be able for her to live because she already has low defense so you need something at least to give her a slight buff in defense so that's why sturdy over precision that's why it's a gold star build. An easy build would be two times vital, one time precision, because you've got the extra accuracy at the end there. Then you throw an accuracy bracer. It's going to be super heat easy to get the required accuracy. Doesn't she ascend into accuracy in the update? You know what? We'll find out in the patch notes. I can't remember. I can't remember if she does, Smitty. But, um... I want to see how much damage it does before I start going completely crazy. No, I agree. And remind me, okay, when the patch hits to test it for you. Because I will build and attack Snake Lady, no problem. So you guys can see what it does. And I need to six star my water one too. And I have to find the gold to unequip my stuff. I think it's like 15%. Okay, so you look at that ascending into 15%. Then you get 20%, isn't it 20% from the precision set? So that's 35%. Plus you get uh, six or 50 something percent from a bracer. So you're at 80%. You really can get all your accuracy super easy. What's the percent for sturdy? 50% of garbage defense. Would that even be worth it? Good point. I am of the mindset something is better than nothing. And I think the... If you can get all your accuracy in uh, subs, right? So, and this is another reason too. If you can get all your accuracy in subs, mullet, then why even worry about like precision? Because now that frees up a two set you can use. Like if you can get all your accuracy in subs and you don't want to go sturdy, then go, you can go three times vital, you know? So, so you got six vital slots or go two, four times vital, two times uh, uh, um, resistance. So now you can do that, right? Because the, I'm just a big fan of not using a set because it makes something easy. Using precision just makes getting to accuracy easier. But if you can get it all done in subs, that gives you that gives you new stats you can gain, right? Because if you get all of it in subs, that's 15% defense that you wouldn't have had. Even, even if it already is a low defense, it's free defense basically because your your bracer slot's covered. You, you've got the all the accuracy you need, if that makes any sense. So that's what I'm saying. You don't have to do sturdy. You could do another vital set. You can do resistance if you want to make sure she doesn't get debuffed. Um, you wouldn't want to do keen because crit rate really isn't going to affect your OGD damage since OGD can't crit. So keen would be out, um, which only leaves like... No, I agree. I'm just saying a story says it's meant for someone with garbage base defense when they could use precision or vital and be more effective. Yeah, you could swap that out to vital. That makes perfect sense, dude. I, I'm definitely not arguing your logic at all. I just think for me, because I, I, I would either go, depending on what my gear looks like, I would go sturdy or resistance or warding. I'm sorry. I keep saying resistance. I would go sturdy or warding. That's what I'm thinking. That, that's that's Val's thought process on, on what he would do with that free. But that's assuming I can get 100% accuracy in subs, which is ridiculously hard. You got to get all the rolls to go your way. So Marshall, uh, we left off on Marshall. I like this discussion, by the way. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Marshall 4, every two seconds, next basic attack deals 200% damage to the primary target. Again... You see, see the theme, guys? See how they're really telling you you want direct damage going forward? Like, this is all the stuff they're, they're throwing at our faces saying, you need to get direct damage. You need to get direct damage. This, all these sets right here are totally geared toward doing direct damage. So that, that's why I'm just heads up. You know, it's coming. 
In general, the gear drops on the Outer Harbinger are better on each stage than previous bosses, to match the fact that it is radically more difficult than a Steel Widow and Elder Drake. So now, let's talk about this line right here. So one of the things they said in Experts, they wanted to smooth the learning curve. So if any of you have watched any starter videos, it typically goes the same way. They tell you to minimally farm Elder Drake, just like I do, enough to get the the vital gear you need to live in Steel Widow, and then go back to Steel Widow, get your Adept gear. Once you have your Adept gear, go to Steel Widow 10. Once you have all your Adept gear you need in Steel Widow 10, go back to Elder Drake and finish off Elder Drake 10, right? Um, everyone pretty much does that. Some people don't even go back to Elder Drake. They just stay in SW10. They don't like that. So what this here is saying is that, so now the, the difficulty curve, how it goes is people are going to finish Elder Drake and they're going to farm Elder Drake, Elder Drake 10 significantly longer than we did back in the day. They're going to have to. And then once they're done with Elder Drake 10, then they're going to progress into Steel Widow because Steel Widow 10 now is, 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 is harder than what we're doing right now. Steel Widow 10 is going to be harder. Okay, just, just FYI. And if you are heavily dependent on OGD already in Steel Widow 10, you're going to have a bad time once the patch hits. I'm going to be honest, if, if, if that was your thing, uh, SW10 is buffed. Yes, it is harder. But conversely, SW11 through 15 is easier now because they smoothed out that difficulty curve. So it goes Elder Drake, then SW, and then um, Outer Harbinger, which is harder than SW. That's the progression path they want people to be on. Right? They don't want people to minimally do Elder Drake and then live in SW10 forever. Like, they want you to have to farm Elder Drake. Then, once you farm Elder Drake, be able to progress into SW10. Then, from SW10, uh, they want you to go into uh, the Outer Harbinger. So, that's going to be the new progression curve, which means I will likely have to update uh, my uh, new start series videos to be more current with what's happening. Well, so, Wrath, they've always told us how to play. They've always told us, just not directly, indirectly they have. So anytime, you know, they make a game, they have an idea of how they want the game to go. When players play outside that vision, then, you know, they recorrect to that. That's why there's patches and meta changes and things like that, because they have a vision for the game. And when that game is off vision, they need to take steps to remedy that. And so the current progression path, which what we have right now is outside that vision. So we are course correcting. Yeah, and, and you're not wrong. No, you're hundred percent right. But that's what they find unacceptable. The, the, the dragon is meant to be the easier one. SW10 is meant to be the harder one. So many people clear SW10 before they clear ED10. It, I mean, everyone does. Like every, I cleared SW10 before I cleared ED10 because it was ridiculously hard, dude. So it's like, I mean, and they don't like that. They, they want a much smoother progression curve. And that's what this is about. I get that though, sir. Like I said, I, I'm making a commitment to the stream to raise a SL to six star and then gear it attack to see what she can do. If they want that, why not just lock SW until they complete ED? Good question. And I don't think that was ever asked in experts. So I, I couldn't answer that. But that's an excellent question, to be honest with you. That's really good when I just don't have an answer. Well, crap. All right. New game mode. I lost my train of thought. New game mode. Guild Wars Open Beta. So Guild Wars is here. Guild Wars is a huge feature that we're proud to release to you in its open beta. We're counting on feedback. They do not want me in that group. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Raph. I don't know. Like, here's the thing. If you can, if you can step back, because sometimes you get a little, a little passionate, right? And sometimes you do get a little pa passionate. If you can step back from that passion, though, and bring up the same points that you 
you've already brought up, but be more, not necessarily political, but a little bit more constructive in how you present those ideas. I think you could be the same person you are as far as addressing issues, but you would definitely need to lose a little bit of the passion and and re resubmit your ideas a little differently. I, I think that would have to happen. Uh, anyway, Guild Wars is a huge feature that we're proud to release to you in its open beta. A little. I'm being nice, Mullet. Mullet and Smitty, come on. Come on now. I'm He Wrath is just a passionate guy. That that's all. He's just he likes what he likes and he he's definitely not a change person. I Um an engagement with the community to improve and refine his features. Players can submit their feedback to customer care in game with hashtag Guild Wars post on our hashtag Guild Wars feedback chat. Just just so you guys know, I have a hard time calling the pound symbol hashtag. I really do. To me, I grew up, this was pound symbol. It will forever be a pound symbol. It's not hashtag to me. Just, I mean, totally unrelated, thing, but that's just how I feel about it. Uh, channel on Discord in the Guild Wars Reddit tab, all available when the mode is released. Customize and upgrade your own Spirit Guard avatar for both offense and defense. Discover new competitive strategies in the Guild Wars deathmatch style battles. Find Guild Wars in the Battlefield menu or access it quickly from the Guild Home tab of the Guild menu. Guild Wars is available to any player in a guild with 10 or more members. Smitty, come on. Come on. Really? Why, why poke? Don't poke, Smitty. Stop. Come on, bro. Each competitive season lasts for one week. So to participate, a guild must register its defense on Sunday. Guild Wars has many great rewards, including deluxe shards. See meta notes below for details and war tokens, which can be exchanged for prizes in new Guild Wars tab of the shop. Some of the new five-star gunsmith champion, a powerful PVP-oriented marksman. That brings us to the gun mage. Five-star marksman with many unique effects. Nature, water, and firing elements will be available. Uh... It, participating in guild wars all right dude all right light and dark elements will not be available at this time and they even told us that as experts as well guys i don't have an explanation for this to be honest with you they just told us we don't know when it's coming so if anyone asks in our stream just let them know so there we go new feature recruitment a lot of games do this so many games do this uh Actually, they, they make it a little bit more difficult than uh, some other games because in other games, you only have to get to like level five or something to get the rewards and you need a certain amount of friends. So everyone would just keep rolling alts and getting to level five and ditching them and doing it all again. They made it a little bit more difficult. Um, welcome your friends into the DHC community with the new recruitment system. The recruitment feature can be found in the recruit tab of the friends menu. To recruit... Dude, the ultimate disc is so nice. Like, honestly, I, I don't... I, okay, so what I'm about to say, I'm going to preface it by saying having two accounts is against the terms of service. And mul Mullet Bomb already hit the nail on the head. But in my dreams and hypothetically, when I saw this, I remember hypothetically thinking I could have my son sign up for a DHC account and I could assist him with playing DHC when he is away from his phone and or sleeping. So, you know, not that that is something I am saying others should do. Just that I do want my son to play the game and I do have the knowledge to assist him being my recruit and help him level up. I'm just saying. <laughs> The recruitment feature can be found in the recruit tab of the friends menu. To recruit, simply send your recruitment code to your friend and have them enter it. So that's typical. We all know what this is. I'm not going to read it. You can see the rewards here. <laughs> hey, if you I would have to agree. Here's the thing. 10 time chaos orbs. You guys, I've talked about it. Yes, I would assist him to get level 25. He has his own phone, his own his own Facebook, his own uh, everything that he can use to sign up to play DHC. 
and I can help him level. Arena, new feature, enemy portraits. Now, um, one of the first things, I gotta give my boy Barcode credit on this. One of the first things he said when he joined Experts was, can we have enemy portraits? And I, I love it. Because you guys have seen me misclick when starting a battle, I'll target the wrong unit. This way just lets me tap one of them and we'll automatically target it. So I'm super happy about that. Fixed a bug that caused players to stop getting points from a sexful some uh, from successful arena attacks if they are logged on for several hours. I didn't know that one. After defeating the last appointment in uh, the arena list, the list should refresh automatically and should no longer break winning streaks. That never happened to me. I didn't know that was a bug. The two, BP, the two PvP energy reward for defeating all opponents in the list will no longer trigger if some of those opponents were disabled due to losing three times. Players must actually defeat all opponents to qualify for the reward. I didn't know that was a thing either. Wow. Two bugs that I didn't know existed. Meta menus. New feature. Deluxe summon. Dude, I, I forgot I'm farming on my... Hold on, guys. I gotta go back. So remember, I gotta get to... Uh the shards for the technician or i'm not going to get my free technician so hold on i gotta readjust here and then we'll be back to the patch notes there we go okay uh oh, no she's max level let me throw someone new in there uh yeah let's throw her in there okay there we go battle all right oh yeah i gotta click auto i gotta click auto i'm sorry guys I don't want to miss the free technician. I've already slacked. I actually have to do it. At least get those points every day to still get the free one. Like I have exactly the right amount of days. Okay, here we go. New feature, Deluxe Summon. This is similar to Rare Summon, but with fixed pool of specific champions that rotates weekly. Find Deluxe Shards in the Guild Wars and Ultimate Blitz. So Deluxe Shards we've seen in many, many, many games. We know how it works. You got specific monsters that are in there, or champions in this case, sorry about that, that are rotated, and you use these to summon them. So what's going to happen if you want uh, Nature GD, or if you want Alia, or if you want Kendrick, or whatever, you save up your Deluxe Shards until it's his week, and then, you know, you blow all your Deluxe, your deluxe Discs to hopefully pull the one you want. But we all know, because we've seen it in other games, you're just going to pull that one annoying three star that's in the same pool that you already have 7,000 copies of. We know that's what's going to happen. But at least your chances are better, you hope. New disc type, ultimate disc. Guaranteed five star champion. Fire, nature, or water. Obtainable in the recruit tab of the friends menu. And of course, of course, you know eventually there's going to be a $99.99 .99 pack. That's going to have one ultimate disc. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, I, I, that's not inside knowledge. That's just me knowing how these things typically work. I can save up for those GDs to only get a million more Rotas or a million more Dr. Synapses. While I like Dr. Synapse and he is one of my favorite champions in game, I would really, 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 really like to stop getting him out of Legendary Summons. Thank you, Game Law. Please note that. Fix a bug that caused XP and Gold Boosters to show the wrong percentage when viewed in the shop. Didn't even know that was a bug. Fix several issues related to the display of currencies in the shop. I've actually gotten a few of the currency bugs. Added KOF coin total on screen results for King of Fighters mode. That makes sense to have it. Don't know why we didn't anyway. Switch champion button and is now available from results when using a friend's champ. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. I like that one. Tapping a currency icon in the summoning menu will now display more information about the currency and where to obtain it. Oh, that's nice. Fix the display issue where outfit VFX and the shop would become distorted. I think that was related to the, uh, the Valkyries. Because the, the witch outfits caused some issues. Fixed a bug that caused three-star champions obtained from limited time summon banners to be locked by default. Thank the maker. I'm, oh god, so freaking happy about that. So, so happy about that. Like, I mean, just ecstatic about that. You, I went through and recently unlocked all the ones that I needed to. 
Outfits, new elite outfits available in the outfit tab of the shops. I, um, for those that don't know, uh, the Cyber Blade Master is posted in the announcement section of DHC. And then uh, Gameloft Gabby posted the other three in general if you do want to check those out. Gills. Fix a bug that caused guild bonuses for crit rate, crit damage, resistance, and accuracy to apply multiply rather than additively. This will increase their effectiveness globally. Cool. Spinning KOF energy now gives guild contribution. Oh, hey. So for all those who aren't, weren't disgusted with KOF and is going to do it when it comes back, then at least you won't look like you're not helping out your guild anymore. You'll actually get guild contribution points for it. That fits is the suggestion I gave about mass unlock unlock. Yes, it does, but I still submitted that because I had not read the patch notes, or they weren't out then, so. Which makes your mass unlock not really needed. Ultimate Blitz. Rare shards have been replaced with more valuable deluxe shards. I don't know. I wouldn't say deluxe shards are more valuable, though. I wouldn't. I mean, your pool is smaller, but, mm, I mean, I guess they are more valuable. Any way you cut it, you have a smaller pool, so you're more likely to get what you want. I guess. All right. I'll let that go. I'll let that go. Boss Raids. Global Boss Rebalance. Now, this is what we're talking about in the beginning when we're talking about Snake Ladies and about smoothing out the uh, progression difficulty. With release of the Outer Harbinger, we've taken the time to retune the difficulty and rewards of existing bosses. In general, bosses will be much more rewarding, but progressively harder in difficulty. In addition, we smooth the difficulty curve between normal and ascendant boss raids. Elder Drake. We felt the difficulty of Elder Drake was already appropriate for its place in the game, but that with many players favoring the Steel Widow, he was quite lonely. We buff the gear drop rates to make this boss more enticing, especially in the early game. Wasn't it like that last time? Wasn't what like that, my friend? I, I'm sorry, I didn't notice your message until later. And hold on, give me one second while you type that out and respond to me. I'm going to go get something to drink. All right, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, but I think what happened is that so after ED7, it got ridiculously harder. Or, yeah, no, after ED8, it got much harder. Where it's so much harder that it was easier to do SW10 instead. So they smooth that. So it's not like that anymore. Ascended versions of the Elder Drake is, are now a bit easier. ED15 is now somewhere between the difficulty of the existing ED13 and ED14. Buff gear drop rates for stages 8 through 14. Stages 8 and 9 have a lower drop rate of 4 star gear and increased drop rate of 5 and 6 star gear. Stage 10 no longer drops 4 star gear and has increased drop rate of 5 and 6 star gear. Tell me that's not, tell me that's not sexy, guys. Tell me that's not sexy. It's going to help me out because I'm going to try to gear that Snake Lady on Brutal first. And then we're going to see how the other build, um, uh, Mullet and I were talking about works out. So I'll go like four times vital, two times sturdy just to see how it works out. And that will help me because I'm only going to get five and six star gear in stage 10. Stages 11 and 14 have increased drop rates of six star gear. I'll actually see how farming 11 or 12 works out. We'll see. Okay, here's the big one. Here's one that's very close to Raph's heart. Steel Widow. In general, the Steel Widow is intended to be a step up in difficulty from the Elder Drake. 
but we could see that this was not the case in reality. Some players utilize early game strategies that involve bypassing the Elder Drake almost entirely in favor of quickly creating a team to farm SW10. Due to the power of its gear uh, rewards like Adept and Mortal, those are two very strong sets, by adding the Outer Harbinger and buffing both the difficulty and rewards of Steel Widow, we want to create a clear progression of Elder Drake, Steel Widow, Outer Harbinger, with each boss starting proportionally uh, more difficult than the last. No more four-star gear, but increased rate of only gear left to able to get five. No, this one said this one only increases the rate of five or six-star gear. This one increases five and six star gear. What that means is because you don't only get gear in Elder Drake or Steel Widow. You also get uh, shards, common discs, puzzle puffs, um, and rare discs. So this is saying you're going to get more five and six star gear and less of the other stuff. So, again, this goes, I know I should be testing this a lot more for you guys to give you better insight, but I haven't tested this yet. So, when this update hits, I'm going to probably be going crazy trying to make new videos and find out new teams that hopefully are uh, new friendly, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is try out um, Double Nagas, um, a completely easy to get starter team like Zinnia, Rhoda, Sigrun, Zircon, Mojo, even though that team will probably be slow as balls to see if it's even possible to do it with teams like that anymore. But I don't know right now. I probably should be testing this all in beta, but there was a big thing back in beta before we were allowed to stream it that we couldn't talk about beta content. So now that they allow us to stream it, um, that makes uh, doing those tests a lot easier. My Steve team was the only one that would work, and it was the only one that I had. I, I understand. I'm, I'm going to test stuff for you, Wrath. I promise. They need to fix bulls this way where where it can't find small elixirs on stage 10. Um, you're, you have a problem getting smalls on stage 10? I don't have problem getting smalls on stage 10. Actually, to be honest with you, I mostly get smalls. Smalls and mediums. I very rarely get uh, mighties. The me personally if they want this to work they'll have to make it so that one team can do at least up to sw i don't so in wrath this is not them saying this okay this is just my speculation i don't think they want one team to be doing it up to sw because they want to encourage you to summon to get more monsters whether that means you're spending or you're stockpiling your summons and then summoning or however it happens I think they want you to have multiple units to, accom to accomplish multiple jobs. That's what I think. That's nothing they have said. So don't don't blame GL. That's just Val thinking, trying to get in their head. Oh, I got you. I read it wrong. That's my fault, Smitty. Yeah, I get all I get is smalls and mediums. Like smalls more than anything. I get what you're saying. Or maybe they could add Ascended Bulls that uh, just take, uh, they give you a higher chance for Mighties. Maybe. Okay, Ascended versions of the Steel Widow are now much easier to do damage being spread more evenly throughout the battle. Buff gear drop rates for stages 8 to 14. Stages 8 to 9 have a lower drop rate of 4 star gear and increased drop rate of 5 and 6 star gear. Yeah, Ascended Bulls was a suggestion that I got from a viewer a while back, and I suggested it, but I don't think it went anywhere. I don't remember if I got an answer, to be honest. Stage 10 no longer drops 4-star gear and has increased drop rate of 5 and 6-star gear. Stages 11 to 14 have increased drop rates of 6-star gear. That's my point, though. That's It's like expecting people to put blocks through shaped holes than just dumping random shaped blocks and saying, good luck. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But let me test it first. Like, I'm going to test all the farmable stuff that's easy to see what it can do in the new patch and what it can do. Uh, or what it can't and then what it can do in the new patch. And then I'll, I'll definitely have YouTube videos covering it. For sure. For sure. And if someone, like, snipes my idea... 
because I am saying it in today's 1126 stream that I'm going to do it. I'm still going to do it. I don't care if someone snipes the idea. I, I'm going to do it. So you guys have a good idea of what to expect. What I think is going to happen, though, I think the changes are going to... So, as you, do you guys know, real quick, we'll talk about the difficulty. Do you guys know why I do my reviews at max 5 star? A while ago, GameLoft released a report, uh, told us, and it goes in general, that a lot of people still have max 5 star units. Not There's not a huge amount of people that have like this huge stable of 6 star units like I do, like Sassy Redhead does, like Smitty does, like a lot of us that, you know, dedicate a significant amount of time. So I do max 5 stars because max 5 stars, as of right now, can do ED10 and can do SW10, no issue. So that's why all of my reviews are always max five star. This might change it though. Due to the increase in difficulty for SW10, my reviews might go, okay, so since they consider Elder Drake early game, my reviews might go, okay, um, max five stars will be uh, for ED10, right? So I'll test them there. But then to test SW10, I'll probably need some max 6 stars. I don't know yet, but I am going to go through my stable of characters. I'll record a video, and I'll let you guys know. Like Summoner's War had it right. They held your hand and said, We specifically made this creature that we're giving you to help tuck down X-Boss. You probably use it. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, shove, shove. They did? I don't remember that. Wrath, could you point out where they said that? I don't ever remember them saying... Any specific unit is good on any specific boss, at least in game. Are you talking about like forum post or something? Anyway, uh, while he's answering that, let's go further down. Globally more difficult, but less RNG, so less chaotic damage makes sense. Smooth difficulty curve between 5 through 11. Reduce base damage and ignore defense ratio on spit attack. This will make it less devastating in ascendant stages of the boss. Love it. Lower the bonus damage based on the number of ongoing damage stacks on targets for all skills, but raise their base damage proportionally. This means that the Widow will deal more damage in general, but get less a bonus from putting OGD on your champions. Immunity and resistance are still useful in the fight, but no longer, but no longer an insta-win by removing the main source of the Steel Widow's damage. This sucks. This I didn't know. You know why this sucks? Do you really know why this sucks? Because all of my starter teams for like really easy free to play teams use Zircon or Amethyst to avoid the OGD. This super sucks for starting people. But it's what they want. They don't want people to just walk into SW10 with a starter team like that. Dang it. This sucks. This pretty much right here says it's going to be a lot harder. Because Zircon or Amethyst really makes a lot of those starter teams work for SW10. Because they just, like, just like it says here. If she can't OGD you, she can't get bonus damage on you. So even if you do get hit with something hard, it doesn't hurt that much. Because you don't have any OGD. Plus you don't have to manage... The whole, you know, you're losing HP to OGD and you're losing it to the boss's damage. Poop. Poop, poop, poop. This means I really have to rethink my... The link I showed you shows you. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Um, uses laser grid attack more often. This is the most consistent form. Oh, great. Here's another one that's going to block out. So a lot of my starter teams... They are built to take, you can take multiple lasers, but they're built that way because you've got Zircon dropping immunity on you, meaning you're taking less damage, you're not taking OGD, so you don't have to worry about when he lasers that it's going to one-shot your opponent. Also, because he's Zircon and Amethyst, you have a regeneration buff on you that's constantly healing you. So even if he does hit you and say Zinnia's uh, wave of celerity is down, doesn't matter because you're still going to be healing from Amethyst, and because typically all starter teams are built vital, um, Zircon heals for a poo ton because he heals based on your the target's max HP, not his. Crap, crap, crap. These two changes right here are very off-putting for 
Excuse me. Excuse me, guy. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at it, Raph. I just don't remember. It's been a long time since I played. Fix a bug where AI controlled champions would be unable to use skills while immobilized by web. They were trapped in their AoE avoidance barrier with no way to escape. This should make the wombo combo of paralyzing support AI just before a laser grid sweep no longer an issue. Yeah, that this is a good fix, but the, these two fixes, right, these two adjustments are bad for noob starter teams. I have to think of something really creative, guys. I'm going to try my best to make five stars work in SW10 and easy to get units. But I think Amethyst is going to have to be pulled out. Which makes me wonder where am I going to recommend people use Amethyst if this doesn't work out like I think it's not going to work out. This is newish when they put in. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. That's why I never saw it. Thanks, man. Rage buff has fewer stats per increment, but increments more often. <laughs> so this is even, this again is not good for starters because here's why. Yeah, he gets fewer stats, but he gets stats more often. Meaning, meaning that if you don't because if you look at my um starter teams it's like two minutes two and a half minute runs it gets it done you're super safe no worries but because he's now going to get more of these stats faster those longer runs are just going to destroy you it's almost like they're saying okay you should build a speed team because you used to be able to do sw10 slow as poop if you wanted to oh <laughs> thanks smitty I, 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 we're going to have some discussions. I'm probably going to hit up Donald Dump as well because him and I also talked theory crafting. Because I want something. They, they specifically made this so I can't come up with something to say, hey guys, here's an easy SW10 team, right? I'm already thinking about who we could use because we're going to need to kill quickly. We're going to need to have, I think Magic Girls are going to, are going to be a big deal because magic girls are going to reduce the damage and i think you're still going to need immunity even if you don't get bonus damage from it or even if you don't stop all the damage like you used to i don't know we'll, we'll me and smitty will talk we'll come up with something when it drops he'll he'll do some tests i'll do some tests we'll see what we can come up between the two of us thanks smitty i appreciate you being someone I can bounce uh, stuff off of. Co-op bosses. All right, so we're on the co-op bosses. Yeah, shield champ would work. Like Nagas, they could be... I wonder if... The problem with Nagas, right? Assuming that that's what we're thinking, because there's Nagas and there's uh, the Water Basilisk, right? The problem with... The good thing about Water Basilisk, three stars. So you can pull it from Common Disc. The bad thing about Nagas, four stars. I, I think with this, a dual Naga comp would still work. Because that, that was my first team. The problem with dual Naga comps is it's slow. And this Rage buff has fewer stats per increment, but increments more often, meaning he's going to ramp up. I don't know if, if a slow comp like dual Nagas will even work. Oh, you can ritual a Naga. Yes, so that could work. Okay, I like what you're thinking. We're gonna that's we'll have to test that because that's easy for someone to do is to get those units because then you can get all the materials in common summons if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Okay. All right, Smitty, we got we got our first one that sounds like it'd be legit and it would be noob friendly. Cause they can build it. Alright. Uh fix an issue that was causing the champions to lose all stacks of the blight debuff after being revived. Oh, that was a bug? Oh, I thought that's how it was supposed to be because you died. I honestly thought it was... I mean, I didn't realize that the, the debuff was supposed to live through your death. <laughs> wow, does it mark your soul? It doesn't just debuff you. It, like, debuffs your soul. Wow, I, I didn't know that's how it was supposed to be. Huh. Facing issue that allowed players to interact with menus seconds before a coit gum would start, leading to potential crashes. Okay. The cooldown of Baldrigore's periodic protection skill will now be paused while he executes skills that makes him untargetable. 
Yeah, it does suck being fixed. I honestly thought it was just how it was supposed to be. I thought if you died, you were supposed to lose all your stats. I didn't. I had no idea. Okay, and here's where we were talking about um, uh, Wrath. Um, the ongoing damage debuff will now be capped at a maximum of 200% of the attacker's attack stat per second. So if you look at their attack, I don't. it doesn't say base attack though. So their total attack. So 200% of their total attack because it doesn't say base. But if you have a lower base, you're not going to get that much of a bonus. Okay. Okay. So it's the entire attack stack. Got it. And 200% of it. Okay. This cap will not be affected by raise attack buff or lower attack debuff. Gear bonus, synergy traits, and guild bonuses count towards the cap. Okay. So obviously your gear, your synergy, and your guild. But raise attack buff does not. So raise attack can put it above 200%. Yeah, this cap will not be affected. Okay. All right. All right, I'm reading that right, guys, right? It's saying that this doesn't count towards the cap. So you can get theoretically over 200% or am I wrong? Am I wrong? This cap will not be affected by raise attack buff or lower attack debuff. Gear bonus, synergy traits, and gear bonus discounts towards the tap, but this does not. Okay, so yeah, these should be able to, you could put it above that then with this, is what I think that's saying. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. It won't affect it, okay. Effects that change target damage taken or received will still affect ongoing damage, okay. Champions that do not scale well with the tap, such as Snake Ladies and Congo, have been adjusted to counterbalance these changes. For now, this adjustment will increase in duration or stacks of OGD. Okay, so what this is saying, so for Snake Ladies, we need to find out how it affects them. Because for Snake Ladies, why would... So there is, she's either going to have more stacks or she's going to have a longer duration for OGD. In the future, we may rework these champions to make them more effective with builds that make sense for them. Okay, so basically they're saying in the interim... Here's the fix that we're giving you because we know we're making snake ladies and other units like her suck. We're going to either increase the duration or we're going to increase the stacks. That's the temp fix. The long-term goal is they want to rework the champs. Maybe. Because it says we may. We may rework these champions to make them more. Okay. So look at this, this right here as temporary. Look at this as what they want to do eventually with them. I guess you could look at it that way, Wrath, and I can understand why someone would look at it that way for sure. Now, here's the explanation. Why did we do this? Champions with strong Owen Gamut abilities like Manish, Sharma, and the Snake Ladies were performing well for their intended role of boss killer. However, they only needed to build a single stat, which is, I've said that a million times, compared to direct damage dealers who have to build four stats, attack, attack speed, crit rate, crit damage. You don't really have to build attack speed, though. I think they're kind of embellishing that a little bit. You can just go attack, crit rate, crit damage. And actually, with the new rage, you don't even want, or the new boss, you don't even want to go attack speed. You just want to go attack, crit rate, crit damage. But it's still three stats versus one, right? I get it. This wasn't fair to direct damage dealing champions. This problem was exacerbated. Exacerbated. I always have a problem pronouncing that word. By the fact that each time we release a boss with more HP than the previous. The percentile damage dealt by ongoing damage would immediately scale to match the boss with no further requirement for gear improvement. Meanwhile, direct damage dealers like Blade Masters, Valkyries, Fairy, etc. would have to scale up their gear to match the new content. This makes designing new content very challenging since there is one mechanic that makes every boss take the same amount of time to kill, regardless of its HP, defense, or the gear of the caster. Which makes sense. Okay, that makes sense to me. But the thing is that OGD was only good in massive boss battles, not to mention that they needed to build more survivability since it was dragged out fight rather than balls to all rumble. True, that's, that could have been how they see it, but unfortunately they do not see it that way, Wrath. Unfortunately. Or fortunately, depending on which side of the fence you're on. Rather than make all new content have some sort of immunity or resistance to ongoing damage or nerfing the other supportive abilities of these champions, we decided to rework the mechanic itself to allow ongoing damage to scale with the gear of the champion. 
Okay. This means that these strong boss killing ongoing damage dealers will now have a clear progression path just like other champions. It will still be easier to build them for their role of taking down high, da high HP targets with damage over time than it will be to build a direct damage dealer, but at least they no longer have an unfair head start on each new boss that we release. Makes sense. Makes sense. Ongoing damage champions will still be equally effective when maximized to their full potential. They simply need to build stats now in order to unlock this potential. We felt that this was a better outcome than lowering that potential or reducing the effectiveness of these champions by modifying their kits. You want direct stomach? Yeah, you do. You do. You're not wrong. You are definitely not wrong. No? That's not how it works. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting because I know there's more. I know there's more. It's not just that. We'll, there, we'll, we'll let him uh, keep typing, because I know he is. Champions, PvE, kill, skill auras. Some skills now will now be considered aura effects, which are ignored by the Outer Harbinger's Blade Bane Bush. Oh, okay. Archangel, Celestial Spinner, Divide. Okay, so the, the self-haste buff from them. Astromancer, okay. My, okay. Valkyrie. Oh, Thunderstorm. Okay, that's good. Sentinel, Electrofill. There's a... Um, no, they, I, what they're saying is, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking they still need HP, they still need defense, right? But to Game Loss Point, they're talking about from a damage perspective. In order to be competitive from a damage perspective, all they need is accuracy. Because once they land their debuffs, that's all they need, right? They're not talking about the HP and the survivability. That that point was strictly from a damage perspective in order to do damage all they needed to build was accuracy that's it whereas blade masters and ink ninjas really only need attack attack speed crit rate crit damage well that's the four things they need no i agree i agree i agree but just from the mechanic point of view of how they deal damage if they have one HP and they land their buffs, they're still gonna do the they're gonna do the same amount of damage no matter what boss they release or how much HP the boss has. That's their point. And they felt that that was unfair to direct damage dealers. But I know what you're saying, but that's not how they're looking at it. AI improvements. AI control champions with immobilized debuff will no longer try to escape any enemy area of effect skills this behavior will cause the champion to stand still without using any skills even though there was no way to avoid the aoe god i'm so glad they're fixing that that is so annoying tiki warrior added a synergy trait 40 percent defense in guild wars fire and water 33 percent in guild wars once ascended added an ascension bonus to nature dark light of 15 percent resistance Well, yeah, I mean, I don't have, you, you're spot on with that, yes. Yeah, but they said in that, they didn't want, they didn't want to do that. They, they, they said they didn't want to do it. I mean, that was an option, but they just didn't want to go with that one, man. Archangel, Retribution, Dark, and Fire, fix an issue with their damage, Chanel scale with their max HP properly, okay. Agile up fight, water and HP, fix okay. Boon Sister, adjusted nature, can then dark the CS starts to better suit their skill damage source and roll as a mage. Okay. Diva, adjusted fire and dark stats to better suit their marksman roll. Okay, the, the one you guys wanted to know was uh Magical Girl. Adjusted Hoshi stats to better suit her roll as a mage. That's gonna really help her as a DPS unit. Candy Monshkin, I don't even care. I don't even care. Candy Munchkins suck. They can bite it. I hate Candy Munchkins so much. Fairy added a synergy trait. Water, fire, light. 41% resistance and guild. Dark in nature. 50% resistance and guild. Okay. Box Assassin. Added a synergy trait to all elements. 19% attack speed and guild wars. Okay. Golem. The duration of buff stolen with consume magic is now capped at 10 seconds. Aww. 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 
I mean, I just started using my basalt. I just made a video on basalt. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. The duration of the buff stolen with plunder is now capped at 10 seconds. Scion. Add synergy trait. 50% crit damage. Ooh! Ooh! I like that. 50% crit damage in Guild Wars? Oh, nice! I like that one a lot because you guys know I like Scions. Gameloft obviously knows I like Scions because they give me a Dr. Synapse every gosh damn time they can. Scan Warlord. Meat Grinder. All elements. Ongoing damage debuff has been increased from 3 to 6 seconds. Okay. Sentinel. Fix an issue where you could stack multiple electric field, electric discard on top of each other. Hmm. Chainsaw. All elements. Ongoing damage trigger cooldown has been reduced from 5 to 2 seconds. Oh, wow. Shark. Added new synergy trait once ascended to water, light, and dark. 33% crit rate. And oh, wow. Nice. Spearman, increase the damage ratio of skill 1 from 75% to 200%. Huh. Huh. Does that make Spearman usable is the question. I don't know. And I haven't tested it. But we'll see because I did ascend and build my water Spearman. <laughs> Look at Smitty. Look at Smitty with the ha 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 ha. Alright. We'll see how it actually works out, man. We'll see, because remember when they buffed the Monkey Kings, and we were like, they're going to be, uh, or Fire Monkey King, and it looks great on paper, but Fire Monkey King still was subpar. We'll see what that does for Spearman. I want to test that for, yeah, me too, me too. I'm very interested. I'm reserved on this one, because on paper, this seems like a pretty big buff. Siege Tower, Checkmate, Light, Water, Nature. Increase the amount of ongoing damage from one to two stats. Wait, increase the amount of going down from 1 to 2 stacks. And reduce the duration from 10 to 7 seconds. Wait, increase the amount of ongoing damage from 1 to 2 stacks. Okay, so when he has 1 or 2 stacks, they do more damage. But they reduce the duration to 7 seconds. Okay. Still garbage. Mullet's like, I got no face. Still garbage. Snake Lady, add an ascension bonus to all... Yep, there's a 15%. So she does ascend into it. Mm -hmm. I have a synergy trait to all elements, 41% accuracy. Okay. Technician, improved eyes so that she will attempt to place her drone before using other skills. Okay. Valkyrie, fix a bug where Thunderstorm wouldn't deal any damage to crystals. Hmm. The, the duration of buff stolen from is now capped at 10 seconds. Fix a bug where enemies wouldn't attack the vampire during the Veil of Shadows, Crimson Storm, or all elements. 5v5 general this is a huge update for the 5v5 competitive mode we have a bunch of great new features balancing changes and bug fixes to make 5v5 better than ever it's gonna be better than ever guys let's read because i haven't read talents we already know about that new feature free champion oh free champion rotation wow giving me league of legends flashbacks right now a group of free champions will be available for everyone to pick. The rotation would change on a weekly basis. Champions can no longer be picked more than once per team. Okay, that makes perfect sense. New feature, advanced targeting HUD. When activated, two new auto attack options are added to the original HUD. Each option allows the pl player to target minions or buildings exclusively. The option can be... Hmm. So I can crash. All right, Wrath. All right, my brother. Mm -hmm. Players can now take actions in the menus while waiting for Q. Yep, yeah, we, we showed that. Champion selection. Timer increased from 30 seconds to 45. Music update. Musical intensity change. Different events are now used to trigger the music of the game to become more intense. An ally spirit guardian has its own music when pushing down the line. Game start. When starting a match, the countdown to the start of the game will only begin once all players are connected. Oh, I know. I know a lot of people crash, sir. Camera control zone. The size of the zone has been increased to make it easier for a player on mobile device to move the camera around. Okay. The camera will now only reset when the touch input is no longer detected. While dead, move the camera and milling map will no longer reset the position when releasing your finger from the screen. Okay. Kill experience distribution rework. Experience gain is now based on the full amount of XP necessary for the defender to reach the next level. A bonus amount of experience is given to the attacker if it's level than lower than the defender. The larger the gap between the two champions, the bigger the bonus. Okay. Mm 
Makes sense. All these changes make sense and sound great. Introducing talents. Class assassin. Every fifth attack applies a slow debuff. Passive two adds life. Okay, so the bomber is considered an assassin. Auto attack applies. Yep. Fighter. Reduce all incoming non-champion damage. Jungle boss damage. Okay, so they want fighters to jungle. Adds life still on auto attack when attacking. Choice one. All healing received is increased by 10%. Passive increase. Movement speed. Enrage. Auto attack in the same target will apply. Shred defense debuff stat. A maximum of five. All stacks are removed as the auto attack target changes. Ah, no. No. I don't really play that, so it doesn't matter. Mage. Okay, that's very much the same. All right, this is the same as what you call it, marksman. Okay, so they want marksman in jungle to support aura. Add a passive aura around the champion, healing all non-building, non-champion friendly minions for twenty health every second. Every auto, every fifth auto attack reduces all cooldowns by ten percent. Interesting, interesting, interesting. My diva, because I play uh, 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 Kutsu, Kutsuko and um diva so this would apply to them auto attack applies to mortal wound diva okay increase move speed i pass it around the champ empowering all non-building okay so it gives you more healing all damage received while under 50 percent is reduced by 10 percent class tank reduces okay so that's the same as the other one 5v5 balancing changes archangel okay ranger defense increase from 8.5 to 10, the results increase 2%. Blade Master. Attack Irmus reduced from 47 to 45. Okay. These are just a bunch of balancing changes. I'm not going to go through all of them. And that looks... Oh, Bug Faces. Players should no longer receive messages related to 5v5. Thank you. Thank you. I would log on and have like 20 bazillion messages saying that I invited someone multiple times and I have to click through them right when I logged on. How do you explain Fix a bug that caused trophy score to not decay between seasons. I know a lot of people were complaining about that one. Lower trophy decay rate between seasons. Previously, players thought 50% of the difference between their current trophy amount and 1,000. Now it'll be 25%. I'm not a competitive guy, so I don't know if that's good or bad for you competitive folks. Fix a bug that allowed players to play during the maintenance period for 5v5. Dude, that's awesome. People were like doing maintenance, but they could still play 5v5. That is so cool. I wish I had known about that. I would have, I mean, I wouldn't have done it, but it's still cool. Like, yeah, I'm playing uh, Dungeon Hunter Champions while maintenance is going on. Dude, that, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome that someone figured out how to do that. After tapping the ping button when the minimize mini map size increase, tapping anywhere outside the mini map will cancel the ping and reduce the size of the mini map back to normal. Champion using a skill while being out of sight in the fog of war inside a bush will no longer make the skill invisible to other players. Alright. Alright, everything looks good. We we made it through, guys. The stream ended up being a review on the patch notes and on us talking about possibly theory crafting. Uh, I will definitely be working for you guys on trying to figure out what's the best stuff they um, uh, Easier teams we can make with all the OGD changes for SW10. I don't think ED10 uh, Starter teams are going to change much But I think the uh, the SW10 is where we're gonna see the biggest change to those uh, that are just starting out but we have been streaming now for our requisite amount of time. We actually started a little early today because I wanted to get out there and, and really take a look at this. But let me know what you guys think. You know, how do you how do you feel about it? I I, I think it's gonna be overall good. We'll see. Oh, they didn't. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But that's gonna do it for the stream, guys. I, I, I feel good. I feel good. I'll feel better once I test SW10. Once it's live to see how it does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very aware, Raph. I'm very, very aware uh, of how you feel about it, my friend. For sure. For sure, I'm very aware. But, I mean, we'll see.
We'll see. We'll see. I think it's gonna, in the end, it should be good for the life of the game. I don't, my biggest concern, and I don't want to bias opinions, but is always for the noob just coming in, right? There, everyone tells everyone, you know, to go in. There we go. We got it. Everyone tells everyone, you know, get to SW10 and farm. Noobs are not going to be able to do that easy anymore, right? They're going to have to put in work in ED10. They're not just going to be able to, you know, uh, go go balls deep on their common disc, pull some stuff that could be good for them, and then, you know, head into uh, SW10. They're going to actually have to work. And we'll see how the noobs respond to that. I, I don't know if they're going to like that or not, but... We'll see. They're, they're not going to actually know any better. It's just going to be us old guard complaining about the good old days, right? I think that's what it'll be. Here, you know what? Let's link uh, the new patch notes. No, they're preliminary patch notes. We'll wait until um, they push it live, and then I'll update my patch notes link in the stream. But that's going to do it, guys. I know I said that multiple times. I'm getting sleepy and repetitive. You know me. It's it's. I'm old. It's around my bedtime, so... I appreciate everyone coming out and supporting my stream. If you didn't know, I also have a YouTube channel. Please head over to my YouTube channel. Check out my videos. Subscribe over there. Help a brother out. But I appreciate everyone for coming. And as always, all you dudes and dudettes out there, stay frosty. You going to say bye, Josh? Frosty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Later, all.